Testing, testing, one, two, three. Testing, testing, one, two, three. A prophecy? Thanks for stopping by. Good. Going to be hanging on for a few more people. Then I'll get started. Hello, go long. Still catching up, eh? No worries, buddy. Yesterday's stream went on way too long. Nearly a six hour stream, if I recall, where the intention was only to be maybe two or three at best. So for this stream, once the challenge begins proper, I've set up a two hour timer that will appear on the stream and if everything goes well should damnable dust <laughs> should set off an alarm so that I don't go over time I've never completed a run of this game before I've got close to the end but not quite finished for this stream I'm going to start a new game then begin the timer Part of the process of trying to complete a full run in two hours will involve perhaps dying and then purchasing and upgrading new weapons as I go. To add a bit more drama to it. This is a great little roguelite game. Lots of lovely details and touches and the combat, simplistic as it is, stylish, and fun and satisfying and incredibly physical. It makes good use of VR in the simplest, most elegant way possible. And the music elevates everything. It's great. For this challenge, I will be playing on the second highest difficulty. I believe the timing of parrying and guarding is the same as the highest, or actually no, I think this is the third highest difficulty. I'm assuming the pedestal here will unlock a hidden one after first completion. The difference between relentless difficulty and challenging difficulty, which is what I will be playing on, as I've observed so far, is merely that if you are fighting against more than one opponent at the same time, the opponent who is not your focus, the timing on guarding them will be much more generous, but on relentless difficulty you are given no leeway in that regard. And I'm curious to see what the max difficulty entails. How are we all doing today? Hope you're doing well. And I appreciate your company. Couple more minutes, then I'll begin a new game. If you have any questions, let me know. I assume I'll have to go through the brief training at the beginning, and I will use that chance to give you, the viewer, a very short demonstration on the core mechanics of this game, if you're not already familiar. Hours performance. Skeleton, hello. Forget something, champion? Hopefully there'll be enough GPU headroom. As nice as it is to use Steam's native monitoring and window capture. I can't be sure, but I do feel like it's maybe 
more intensive than using third-party software. Hmm. OBS also seems to be more intensive than it is usually. Perhaps I can try and lower this next time. I don't dare change it now whilst I'm streaming. Who knows what that will cause. There are so many lovely touches in this game regarding how the physics work and what weapon you might prefer to use for parrying versus attacking. They all have their own stats, which you can elegantly bring up by holding out your palm and pressing the trigger button. Each weapon does guard damage and health damage. You can optimize accordingly. Have a preferred weapon for doing health damage and then one for guarding. And what's interesting, too, is at the moment my guard weapon is this sword. There is a different level of inertia and weight added to each weapon to, to have a nice extra touch to its efficacy for guarding. For example, in my right hand... Let's change this. Hold on. Put you here. So now, I have this axe in my left hand. Its guard damage is one less than the sword. But because it is slightly bigger and heavier, there is more of a lag and delay for your movements, meaning that if you want to sharply adjust to block an attack, it's not quite as smooth and efficient as using a lighter weapon. That's a really, really nice touch. Very elegant. So you could use it for dedicated blocking if you wish. And you can be successful if you're accurate and fast. But this allows more freedom of movement. It's great. Okay, that's enough. Other forges must have survived the calamity. But why can't I reach them? That's enough yapping from me. Hey, cats. I have seen a couple of, of his videos, yes. That's the one go along, yes. Alright, we're gonna begin a new save file. Same difficulty. Let's get you onto my left wrist. Hello, Tommy.
Let's see if we have to do the training. Once I get into the hub area, and I'm done talking, then I'll start the timer. We'll see if I can do a full run in two hours. Wake up, champion. Mm. Our city lies in ruin. In its place, monsters and twisted spirits now thrive. I have restored you as best I can. Together, we can stop this madness. Defend yourself. So you hold the weapon, aligned with the UI prompt, and then you'll guard. Quite generous. Every time you block an attack, you do guard damage, which is the white bar. The red crystals are the enemy's health. Well done. It's time to move. After you stagger an enemy and you swipe according to what the UI prompts say, you will do health damage to them. There are weapon abilities that can bypass the no guard wait. meter which allow you to damage health directly. And depending on how fast you're swinging when the prompt comes for health damage, will alter how much health damage you do. So applying more physical momentum does matter, to a certain extent. But it's not that dramatic. The game is otherwise quite forgiving. The Unraveled will show no mercy. Choose your target and destroy it. Oh, has it reset my settings? shouldn't do that. It should keep them across all saves. Apologies, everyone. and welcome back. I missed your message when you said that you were the Be haptic guy in yesterday's stream. When I was watching back some of my VOD and paying attention to chat more, then I saw that message. Apologies for ignoring you. Jer from yesterday's stream also complimented me for my ability to see and interact with chat, and ironically, I missed most of those messages that he sent. Even though you'll see me look at chat and it's all on the screen for you, my eyes will tend to focus in on the latest one as I'm, I feel a bit insecure about really carefully going through all of chat, but I will try to keep up with all of you. Admittedly, with the pace of this game, it will be harder for me to keep up with chat and I'll be on a strict two hour limit and you'll see that timer appear on screen once we begin proper. But I'll do my best. And yes, this is an excellent game. Can I skip the... No, I can't. Okay. So we'll get through the training. So we block, stagger, do that. These are fodder enemies, so they die quickly. Any light swipe will kill them once they're staggered. Doing a dash see the white bar above the health, the guard meter, if I dash into the enemy, that will do some guard damage. And you can upgrade that as you go through the run. And also different weapons have different stats that can vary your guard damage, your dash damage, and so on. <laughs> Clear the 
Reclaim the power contained within the balloon. Advance, champion. Yes, I have played before. I've just never completed a full run before. I've got very close to the end, but never to the final boss. Press on, champion. I love how stylish this game is. So many great, great, great touches. So we guard. You see the white powder is going down. You can hit between that to do more guard damage. So to be optimal, of course, you can get you can sneak in strikes between your guards. This is dash impact, so getting this crystal will upgrade the dash impact to 15, so I'll do that little bit more guard damage if I dash into an enemy. This increases the combo limit, quite important, I think, and this one just gives you the currency. Note the great touches of how you can grab the object, and then if you let go of it, it will float away according to the physics of how you moved your hand when you let go, and then shrink and elegantly reappear. It's such a lovely touch. You can do that, grab it, and grab it again. Love those things. And on the index controller, you have to squeeze quite hard to break the crystal in your hand, which is another immersive touch. Follow through, champion. Strike them down. I get excited when playing this game too. It's really, really cool. Do guard damage swing. You'll know if you've done a max damage health hit, depending on the noise it makes. I'll try and demonstrate that, that for you now. So we're going to stagger this enemy. You can dash backwards to evade once you're in combat. You're not locked in. You can retreat. That can be a valid tactic to get a sneaky bit of extra stagger damage in. Okay, he's staggered, so now we're going to do a hit, and then light hit. Hear that sound? It goes ching ching. The deeper the sound, the more health damage you do, and you'll come to recognize when you're doing max health damage with your swing. Welcome, Penguin. Can you hear the game okay? The balance between my voice and the game adequate? This gives you more health. This gives you more dash impact. As this is the training... It doesn't matter what we choose at the moment, because we are Show going to die. What you can do. This teaches you the dashing into enemies and flicks guard damage, and the damage increases with the distance travelled. So there's lots of little extra touches and consideration put into what are otherwise quite basic mechanics that engage you more as a player. It's not a case of just pressing the dash button for flat damage to their guard. You moment to moment are, con are considering quite a few things, in including the distance of your dash to maximize the guard damage and which weapon you're going to use for guarding versus health, and then how fast you swing depending on the interaction when you use the weapon abilities and so on. There's a lot more going on with just those small touches, which is, I think, uh, very, uh, very, uh, it's, it's, it's something I really appreciate as a more veteran gamer, that there's more to consider and think about on a micro level. Not because I care to optimize, it's just more interesting, I feel. Those touches add a lot more.
I'm deliberately being much slower and pacing myself so you can see the action. I will not do that so much on the run proper. CG, welcome back and good evening. The squeezing heart might just be an input bug caused by it being synced to quest controllers, which is a problem in some, in some games. The squeezing... No, it's a deliberate thing for the index controllers. I'm playing on a Valve Index that has the, um, the, the special gripping thing. So, on the Valve Index, just to demonstrate to you, as you can see the VR view, assuming that you're not familiar, when doing a grab, you have different thresholds of grip depending on how hard you, you squeeze it. So anything under this threshold is referred to as proximity and it's self-explanatory. It is in reference to the proximity of your fingers to the touch sensor and different games will program it in different ways that different amounts of fingers will activate the grip. But the higher the number, the more the the, the closer a set amount of your fingers have to be to, to the the grabbing area here. If you prefer to have to put a little bit of a squeeze in, you can then set that to force. And that is where you you're fully holding on with the amount of fingers that is set by the game and then you have to squeeze with with an extra quite a hard amount and force 55 is roughly what what this game goes for which is a good balance I, I feel and uh, and then you can set the release threshold to deactivate the the grip input Let's set that back to 95 I believe it was but actually we're gonna go to default default bindings because it messes with the game otherwise. Nope, default. Stay on default. Nope. Be good, Steam. Be good. Be good. Be good. This is a problem with Steam VR because I think it uses web servers to save settings. It saves locally, but also it relies on a web server, so trying to actually customize your bindings can be a real pain in the ass. It really needn't be. So it's refusing to change the state at the moment, so I'm concerned that's going to mess up the bindings. I will go... And then the UI will just fail on you entirely. And, yeah, it's not good. Steam VR still has a long way to go. They're two very different games, Candy wouldn't be fair to compare them. Which do I enjoy the most? Moment to moment, probably this one. But again, they are very different games, and welcome. Game sound may be a tiny bit louder. Yes, sir. How's that? The binding menu is indeed a giant pain. And it will be arbitrary and random as to whether it lets me mess with the bindings again. It just stops working. And it's been a, it's been a pain since I can remember with SteamVR. There we go, it's decided to catch up now. So we're going to back up. And we're going to activate the default controls. So I don't mess with anything. Okay, now it's decided to save. Oh, I see, GC. What about it didn't, uh, didn't quite grab you? Can do double strikes with your weapons. Well 
Let's carry on and get through the tutorial and then begin the two hours proper. Good. Push Here we forward. go. Now you see why I have restored you. Rokar is no more. Should that creature continue unabated, its corruption will unravel reality. When you are ready, return to the surface and destroy that creature. Okay. So, we're going to choose challenging difficulty. I will arm you with the finest weapons I can muster. That's the but most enjoyable so far. Can combat this horror. All of the unlocks are now locked again. We'll see how far I get. I'll try and be more efficient and optimal with how I play and attempt to make it a good visual spectacle for all of you. Is there anything that you would like to ask before I begin proper? I will put a timer, a two-hour timer, on the, on the top right of the screen when we begin. Just for this stream, Penguin. It just didn't feel punchy and you felt the graphics left a lot to be desired. The art style was nice and you liked that. The weapons didn't snap too quickly. There was some physical sway. That was nice. I liked the physicality of it too. Again, if you have something you would like to ask now, do so. How are we coming through? Everything good. Hmm. Tip alerts up there. Chat, alo chat overlays up there too. Good stuff. Stats on the weapons. We can't display at the moment. Alright, none of you have anything to say. Let's begin. Timer is going up. Two hours. Let's do this. Thank you. Each weapon has powerful magic infused into its very essence. Through combat, the yep. power let me go, let me go, let me go. I'm on the timer. Come on. Yep, let me go. So now it's teaching me to okay, we'll we'll count this as part of the timer. Call upon it and show these creatures your Okay, I can't move. Let me move. Thank you. So then activate stasis. Good. Again. Yep. Okay. Let's go. Yep. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. This ability protects me against attacks. So you can take some hits for free, basically. Okay, we have big swings with this weapon, deal 25% 20, more health and guard damage. 
Attacks with this weapon have a chance to inflict soul burn. Alternating attacks with your other weapon causes this weapon to deal 50% 50, 50 guard damage. I'm going to go for soul burn with the sword. Increases the potency of the super of the super ability of this weapon, but the sockets are full. And this one increases dash impact. We're gonna go for currency. That will be useful. If I die, I probably will. In upgrading the weapons and purchasing new ones. Hello, mysterious foe man. Go, champion. Lay this one to rest. Let's go. Stasis. Inflict stasis with this weapon's next attack, trapping the enemy in time for seven seconds, attacking in them in a state break stasis, dealing 20 guard damage. Damn. Stasis. Attacking. 20 guard damage. Health damage. I think that every red crystal denotes five health. Of course I wouldn't realize it's you, Charmy. How would I know? Welcome back. This is health, if you need it. I think I'm okay for now. I've taken one damage, but that's all right. Shard of Courage, minus one maximum health, plus two guard damage for this weapon, or currency. I'll take the currency. Speaking of guard damage, let's have a look at the weapon stats. Ah, so my right hand sword does seven guard damage. All in all, it's better and will do more damage when guarding with that weapon, but it, it's, it's slightly slower to maneuver through the world compared to the dagger. And the dagger gives you plus two combo limit. The sword gives you plus one. Lots of stuff to consider. Oh, I love the music in this game. It's just so perfect. That soul burn inflicted. Oh yes, if you change the difficulty to a lower one, the enemies are slower, but as you say, that's not interesting. Challenging difficulty is presently just the right pace for me, and as you progress through the different zones, they get quite fast and it becomes very exhilarating. It's a great level of challenge, very well balanced. The more combos you have, the more chance you have to do health damage when the enemy is staggered. The soul burn chipped away at his health. To dust. I've got one health left, probably best. I heal myself if given the chance. I do. That gives you more dash impact. That one does it. 
Makes a big swings with this weapon, deal 25% more health and guard damage, but vitality before the highlands. This was released four or five years ago, I believe. 2019, I think this came out. Here's a big guy. The big guy, in he incorporates a new mechanic where you have to physically get out of the way. Love it. The more that VR games encourage me to move, the better. Ironic that their end would come from within the city itself. Avoid its heavy attacks. <laughs> Here we are. I'll take it slow to begin with so you can see the mechanics in action. Oop. There we are. Sometimes you'll get the prompt to sneak in a bit of health damage after a successful dodge. But you do have to be quick. And the game gets less lenient the further you go. Like that. He's nearly staggered. There we are. We're going to use stasis on him now. Then we're going to dash at him. Do extra guard damage. My bulwark shield is charged, so I may as well use it. I assure you, that gets much faster as we progress. We're good for health. Dash impact, not so important. We'll go for Aether. If I feel too pressured in this scenario, I can dash away. Retreat is a thing. Stasis is ready, may as well use it. Get extra damage. Now I can make the choice, I can be more tactical. The Bulwark special ability on my right weapon is nearly charged, so it's better I use that in attacking and guarding in order to charge the super. So there is stuff to think about beyond just swinging and dodging and parrying. You can be more tactical with these things. There you are, it's charged. So now my stasis is halfway charged. I'm gonna switch to the dagger. You can see the meter down there. He has half crystal of health left. So that will end him. Well done. More guard damage or We'll go for Aether. I'm already heating up. And here is the first of three bosses. There it is. What is it doing? Is it tending to the Aether Bloom? Never mind. 
Questions for later. Kill that abomination champion! This boss introduces AoE attacks that you need to be cognizant of. Dodge. Do a dash. I am still thinking about whether to use my right or left weapon. Stasis is ready. Dash. Attack. Get him in stasis. Dash again. Swipe. Health damage. Use the sword for maximum. Health damage, that is. Just summoning the swords in itself is so fun. Stasis is ready. Activate, charge, hit. More damage. Use the sword, because my bulwark shield is nearly is nearly ready. It's ready now. Health damage. The timer becomes less forgiving the longer you go. Health face. There's AoE. You can use your weapon to destroy those barnacles. It's doing AoE, dash away. So there's a good mix of Reward for being both offensive and defensive. Health face. It always goes horizontal vertical swing with a varying angle degree. And the soul burn finished him off. A clean first fight. <laughs> it seems you've wounded more than just its pride. Pursue it deep Thank you, cats. before it can recover. Absorb the balloon and continue ah, champion. yes, of course. The sound and the glowing weapon is also an indicator. Which I didn't notice until informed there. Thank you. So we have Aether. More combos. And this one is wild at one or fewer health crystals. This weapon deals plus 25% health and guard damage. I'm going to go for extra combos. More chance to do health damage. Before we continue, I need to remove an article of clothing. Bear with me. Very well considered system in this game, if I do say so myself. In life, spell readers were masters of manipulating Aether. 
and even they couldn't protect themselves from With every new area, the game escalates the challenge with a few new mechanics. And then come the third area, you fa you face against those same mechanics combined but supercharged and <laughs> when I come across a supercharged knight, you'll see what I mean. The blocking is very exhilarating. It says that you can strike these things out of the air, but it's finicky on whether it works. Like so. Doesn't seem to. I shouldn't have done that, I'm on a timer. And vertical. Fun. They certainly had a flair for the dramatic, didn't they? And I am low on health. Both the supers are charged. Stasis. Away. Three enemies is more than I can handle. If you leave the enemy too long, their guard meter will recharge. That's another consideration you have to make. So me backing away from the knight there causes his guard meter to fully recharge. I could have stayed in the fray against three enemies. Risk versus reward. This game is great fun. Ah, a health crystal. What's this one, actually? Ah, you get an additional trait socket for minus one maximum health. So there are... The choices that you make at the end of every level is interesting and has a genuinely meaningful modifier on how you engage with the rest of the game, which, again, is very appreciated and is something that a few other roguelikes in VR could improve upon, I feel, with the choices that they offer. So I have to make a choice here. There's a mage on the left that will do ranged against me, or two of them. So even though the knight is closer, best I... But I have to back away. Luckily she had soul burn on her that finished her off even though I didn't do the health damage. I can get behind some cover to try and avoid the long range without needing to consider it versus this knight, but as you can see, the enemies do pay attention to that. And they do maneuver so that you're in line of sight. This is better AI. It's good AI. Back away. Use stasis. Dash. He's gone. There we go. Next to Big Boy.
Soul burns inflicted. As you become more confident and proficient with reacting to the, the swings of the enemy, you can begin to sneak in attacks of your own. Like so. Using one weapon dedicated to blocking. Dash. Take his guard. One, two. And you can begin to develop your own style with how you use the weapons. You can do dual strikes at the same time, you can do one after the other, and try and weave those in elegantly, in combination with your needing to parry. Of course, you can also do a dash build, where you back away, dash forward again. There's a lot going on. Plus two maximum health crystals, yes please. And this is on top of there being quite a reasonable selection of reasonably different weapons to unlock that have different perks and bonuses and modifiers to them to further alter things. Thank you, Cat. You can also upgrade the weapons that you have, so they do more damage, health and guard, and have more trait slots, and so on. Now, I missed the angle of those, those swipes there. It's not really strict when doing health damage, but you do have to get it in the general angle that it states. Now, she's a pain in the ass, and they're both a pain in the ass, and they're distracting me. I forgot about my abilities then, I was too distracted. to the city now. Okay. It looks like the calamity has had more time to strengthen these ones. This is a supercharged night. I'm going to solely dedicate this fight to parrying just so you can see how it really ramps up and it's exhilarating on this difficulty. Incredibly fun to parry their onslaught. death and it gets even more relentless from then on so having to weave in your own attacks whilst keeping up your guard is very engaging of course with this genre death is part of it and now that I have to restart the run I can choose to purchase new weapons which are unlocked by defeating enemies along the way welcome back champion Magnificent work out there. Through our efforts, the Forge is slowly returning to its former glory. With enough Aether, I can permanently enhance any weapon of your choice. Not at the Take moment. The I wouldn't be able to focus on the idea. Now is not a good time. 
on a less involved game where I'm not on a timer, sure. So these are the new weapons that are unlocked. You can pick them up to view their traits. Attacking enemies affected by soul burn with this weapon deals 50% more health and guard. Guard damage, soul burn is the skill that you can use. You get a one plus combo limit, average guard and health damage. Then you have the axe, which is what I had on the previous one. This one does more base health and guard damage, more dash impact. So you can incorporate that into a dash build if you wish. Empowered Strike, which is very powerful. Empower this weapon, causing its next attack to deal 200% guard damage and 10 health damage, ignoring the guard. So you can ignore uh, another guard phase with this one. Uh, finishing a combo with this weapon deals plus 10 health damage, so this one is very much focused on doing health damage. Then you have this. A crest that you can't guard with. You can think of it as... Um, if you prefer a one-handed build, this just complements it by giving you extra stats. You get two plus maximum health, one plus combo limit. Um, it does guard damage, but the reason for that is, I believe, is because when using a two-handed weapon, the guard damage and health damage is modified by the weapon that you have in, in your offhand, and you'll see that soon. So this one has Concussive Blast, you can knock the enemies away all around you, dealing 50 guard damage. Uh, this weapon cannot block attacks, but your weapon deals 50% guard. But your other weapon deals 50% guard damage, so it buffs the other hand. And so on. And then you have two-handed weapons, which are, I think, they are challenging to, they're challenging to use, but the payoff is worthwhile. They're very hard to block with due to the inertia system in the game, which I think is very cleverly and elegantly done. And this one, guard damage 11, health damage. Vicious strike, lose one health to empower your weapon, causing its next attack to deal 20 health damage, ignoring the guard. You can upgrade this... this... Um, this skill whilst you're in a run so that if you kill an enemy with this with this skill you won't lose one health and and you can modify all the other skills in various ways and all that stuff and of course if you wish to just upgrade the weapon so in my right hand I have the sword I pick this up will now do nine guard damage I know you put it to good use if I grab it again the cost is up here, so it costs 55, and this will give it an extra additional socket, and so on and so forth. It's very intuitively done. You have a left weapon and a right weapon. Rather than have a laser pointer and choose left or right, you merely grab the object, a physical in-world object, with that hand. It's wonderful, intuitive, well thought out, and plays into the emotions and strength of VR fantastically. Very elegant and simple. I know I say that a lot, but I you want know, to emphasize it. You know, this place it. could use a tidying up. No, I know. There are more important things to worry about. One and a half hours. No worries. If you can use both crests and... You can... Yes, I know that you can strike with it. Yeah, I was thinking about guard. Yeah, you can strike with it. Yeah, that's right. If you use both crests at the same time, every attack needs to be dodged. You can't parry anymore. That is... Wow. That's a nice touch. Very difficult. Very active. That's going to be a great workout. So then you have a crest here, arcane focus. This weapon cannot block attacks, but both weapons receive two times supercharge from all sources, and so on and so forth. And as you go, you can unlock weapons all the way to here. So, um, let's think here. This one makes uh, AOE damage area. Yeah. This mace. I haven't used it before. It does excellent guard damage. Locking with with this weapon grants it two times supercharge. And the cost is generous. It's only 60. So we're going to give this a go. We're going to make the mace my dedicated guarding weapon. And I get one plus maximum health. <laughs> I thought you'd like that one. Notes the difference here. That if I move the weapon... It's, it has a sort of lag to it. You can see it lagging behind somewhat. So it's a bit more cumbersome to move around fast, emphasizing what I said earlier, that if I instead have this, it's much more precise and snappy, which is perfectly in line with the fact that it's a heavier weapon. It's, it's so elegantly done. Really, really well done. 
Yes, you reset when you die. No, does he reset when he dies? No, 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 it's two hours to... to finish, regardless of whether I die. Let's make sure it's going. Yep, still there, so one and a half hours left for me to finish this run. Or to do a full run. Not two hours per run, we'll be here forever. Okay, so yep, we're going to take the mace, and to equip it, you merely grab it with the hand you wish to have it on. Nice, done. Going to be harder to parry, you can see it's more wobbly. Upgrade it. 12 guard damage. Excellent choice. Additional socket. <laughs> I thought you'd like that one. This one costs 150, you do 14 guard damage, but I do need to think about health damage also. This only does 5 health damage. This is very much a guarding weapon. Now, let's think about a health damage weapon. The axe is a health damage weapon, but I don't want to have two somewhat sluggish weapons at the same time. So... Hmm. Health damage is six on this sword. Four for this one. It seems I may just have to stick with... I'll stick with this sword for now. I'm guessing it's more of a jack-of-all-trades weapon. Excellent choice. Ooh. It is more, more of a guardy one. Hmm. Decisions, decisions, decisions. Meaningful decisions, mind you. That's fun. Meaningful choices are fun. It would be nice to know that we're not alone out here. I love that I have to consider not only the the numbers, the stats for guard damage and health damage, but I'm also thinking about the weapon's ability and its weight relative to whether I should be using it for guarding and if it will mesh well with the second weapon. Those added details are very much appreciated and much more interesting and meaningful, in my opinion, than just thinking about numbers. Um, I guess I should keep this one. We'll, we'll do low health damage, but this one does have the bulwark. Bulwark. Not sure how to pronounce bulwark, which will be handy for survivability. Let's upgrade it again. I know you'll put it to good use. I don't have enough currency. Next run. Let's go. Increases the potency of the super ability of this weapon, so this one has Soul Burn. Soul Burn now charges 25% faster and deals 7 health damage on impact. Interesting. Or, for my sword, blocking with this weapon while Bulwark is active deals 25% guard damage. I'm gonna go for health instead. I'm not skilled enough to get through this without having high enough health. Mind you, that low health damage is hurting me here. But this is very effective at breaking guard. Look at that. I think we're going to need to optimize our health damage. Okay. 
I could get another... Ooh, health or super increase. I'm gonna go for health. Playing it safe. Soul burn. Hit the wrong one. Damn it. One. This is not good. I do not have enough opportunities to do health damage. See how we do. Isn't it fantastic, Aaron? Isn't it just? Do a hit. I could maybe optimize the health damage by swinging a bit faster and harder with the sword. But hopefully, I can find an upgrade. That increases my combo limit to compensate for that. I want to also bring attention to the music and how it's dynamically programmed based upon whether you finished a round or not. And just give a... There we go. Combo limit plus three. No, no, plus one. And how it's been so well... The music has been so well programmed and is so appropriate to keep up the pace and tempo of what you're doing in-game. Masterfully done. It feels very good, Joseph. Feels fantastic, and I think the music really eggs you on. It's just pitch perfect. Soul burn, guard. Sneak in a hit. Got a hit. One, two. The initial strike counts as one of the combos. One, done. So that extra, extra combo on the health damage is really helping out. <coughs> That's really helping out now, excuse me. One, two, three, he'll guard now. You can do a slight bit of guard damage through the enemy guard. Two missing. Dash impact plus five. Yeah, we'll go for this. Big boy. Burns ready. That will drain his health. In fact, now that I think about it, with the uh, slower weapons like the mace and the axe, there is enough of a laggy inertia to it that 
for some of the more agile attacks from the knights, where you block very quickly in succession. I don't think this would make it in time. See how it lags? Yeah, you see that? That's a lovely touch. Impact, health, ether. You despise a lag of heavy weapon it feels unnatural in VR. My, um, my counter to that argument is that I think it's unreasonable for the player to expect everything to be one-to-one, -one because if we are to immerse ourselves within a VR world that has its own rules and gravity, and we are to have interesting and meaningful consequences that feels like it's part of a world that we are participating in, then there has to be consequences like that that we as players need to accept. Because at the end of the day, this is, we understand intuitively, this is a heavy mace, and being able to move it one to one, as if it's completely weightless, is not only immersion breaking, but unreasonable for the player to expect, and it also puts pressure and limitations onto the creativity that devs can employ. So I think as players, we should step into a VR world understanding that we, our own body, which is holding a near weightless controller, is not the character in the game and we have to role play a bit and give, give, give VR a bit of leeway. Otherwise, it's always going to hold back the potential of the design if devs give in to that pressure. That's my response to the complaints about inertia. There we go, one. Soul burn. Extra health damage. Dash. Back away. Smack. Guard. One, two, three. Next health phase should kill him. There we go. Yeah, yeah. Gla I'm glad that that you agree and you can see the sense in where I'm coming from there because I really think the ramifications that I mentioned are, are a very real thing. And, uh, yeah, we, we should be more forgiving and we should be more forgiving as players in that way. So far. All right, uh, let's improve the power of Soul Burn. So it now does seven health damage on impact, on top of the damage over time it does, and charges faster. Definitely come in handy. What do we have here? 
Trade health for one more trade socket. Maybe I'll do that. I can get... Finishing a combo with, with this weapon deals 10 health damage. Yes! We want that for the sword. I think that 10 health is one red crystal. Yeah, exactly. And what I like to say also is that when we're kids and we're playing pretend, and we're imagining that we're holding something weighty, we we mimic that in real life, don't we? We sort of go like that to because we we just understand the inertia intuitively with a bit of life experience. Okay, so we've got four enemies on me here. Uh, we're going to soul burn him. That should take him out. Going to activate Bulwark. Cross them. Sneak in a couple of hits. Do a double. One, two, three. He's nearly gone. One, two. Guard. One, two, three. Good. One, two. I always forget to get to sneak in the extra health damage. Soul burn is nearly ready. Got it. Yes, treat it as imaginary play. Assisted imaginary play. Very well said. Okay. Ooh, trade one health for extra health damage. This will enhance the super ability of the weapon even more. 28 health damage over 14 seconds. Yes. I have a feeling that Soul Burn could be my saving grace. Get to do that. Soul burn. This one, void touched. Breaking enemies out of stasis with this weapon inflicts 100% guard damage. But I don't have anything that inflicts stasis, do I? No. Huh. What's this? Do more health damage, trade. Trade one health to do more health damage. I think I'm gonna do it. <sighs> Getting a bit sweaty. Two mages. We're going to use the cover on the left. Try and draw them in. Oh, 
Get rid of the fodder. Damn it! Okay. Collect myself. Soul burn. One, two, three. Nearly got him. One health. <laughs> Good. <sighs> All right, what do we have here? Two mages, two knights, one minor fodder. Double hit. That worked out well. Soul burn. One, two, three. Oh, I killed the other one. Nice. <laughs> okay. One plus health. More health damage. Lose one health. Or Aether, we're going to take the one plus health. <sighs> Back in a second. Need to get a towel. Went up the headset too much. How are we doing on time? Just over an hour. It's all right. <sighs> Round two. Easy. Now he's going to go into overcharge mode. Watch, the, watch this. It's so good. It's so fun. Ah. Oh. Took some hits, but it's worth it to show off just how hectic it can get, and, and being able to 
react to those and parry that onslaught is so satisfying. Soul burn. Shield is nearly charged. Take up a knight. Oh, there's another over there. We don't want to aggro him. All right, we'll take them both on at the same time. Good. One, two, three. One, two. Soul burn. May kill him. Gotcha. There's two difficulties above this. I thought there was a... Oh yes, of course, there's, a rel there's Relentless and then the hidden one. Yeah, I bet. That's exciting to think about. Another combo limit. Yeah, we're going to take that. Actually, what's this? Enhance the super ability. Ah, go for combo. <sighs> Second boss. Is. It looks like a battle took place here. I suppose not all of the what. Look up above. Oh, it's stalling for time. Cut these things down. Sorry. All right. Walk. No soul burn, nearly ready. Back up. One, two, three, four. So he's charging a big AoE. I can get up to him and do a, a health attack to stop him. But I wasn't confident I would make it, so I backed up. And what's clever is that the other enemy does not leave the AoE radius. It knows that you as a player might want to try and bait him out whilst you are in safety, and the devs programmed it so that can't happen. Love it. Whoa! Forgot about that move. One, two, three, four. One down. This looks a bit ominous. Jesus. 
Out of focus. It's all done. Walk, come on. One, two, three. Damn, I missed it. Very short timing to get some health damage in. Headway. Whew. Oh yeah, this game gets the blood going. It gets the excitement going. Those it's great. Need to be stopped. This can't continue. So because I made more progress and uh, defeated a different kind of enemy, it will unlock more weapons for you. I think if you defeat the new type of enemy once, you unlock a new weapon. As for whether you get some for finishing the game, not sure. So I unlocked the Duelist's Edge. This does Stasis Strike. Deals more health and guard damage when at full health. Gives you minus dash impact, but more charges and another combo limit. <sighs> now we're doing on time. I'm gonna guess 50 minutes. 55. Oh. It's still doable. Back in a second. Twist around? Are you sure? Okay. Sorry if there was any um, loud tapping on the microphone there. I was wiping down the headset. <laughs> Admittedly, if I had something like a big screen beyond that was near weightless and didn't take up so much headspace, it would be a far more ideal headset to play this kind of game with. Hashtag big screen, send me a beyond. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. You enjoying the game, guys? Yes, I did go and get a drink of water, too. Do you know what I love? I love that... I'm tired. 
I love that my lower back hurts a little bit, and that's just because I'm, I've been very passive recently, and I've uh, slipped a disc a few times in the past. I just love, I love that I'm sweaty, and being exerted by this, because of how that will just strengthen me in real life, right? You can have amazing fun playing a game like this, and you get stronger and fitter in real life, albeit in a very, very tiny way, but it's great, and yeah, it's just wonderful. Whereas, flat screen, I'll be sitting on a chair, staring at a screen, twiddling my thumbs or fingers. No. No, no, no. Now then, I'm happy with the mace. I like the soul burn benefit it gives me, so I want to upgrade that further. I do more guard damage. Excellent choice. What's the next upgrade? Adds an additional socket. I'm not so happy with the sword, but I do need something that can guard fast. <clears throat> it's a compromise I have to make. Um, I don't know of any other fast weapon that does more health damage. I think that's the trade-off, really, isn't it? If you have a smaller, faster weapon, then you're going to have to sacrifice health damage, whereas if I were using the, the axe, more health damage, but laggier movement. Hmm. Gonna stick with this combo. Two fifty. Excellent choice. Hope the stream is coming through smoothly. Yes, I noticed that on the VOD as well. When you see me weave and duck, it doesn't look anywhere near as engaging as it is to actually physically do it. I, I wonder if the Steam VR view has implemented some kind of sneaky motion smoothing, or whether it's just my incredibly still head. Ah. 14 guard damage. They're both good at guarding. Alright, let's go. No time to waste. Potency. One trait slot. Ooh, for one health. Increased potency on soul burn. Burn for efficiency. I love that I can do a dual swing and it actually properly counts. Good work. Yes, combo limit. That's a difficult one, CG. Uh, Vertigo 2 is a decent contender. Good.
You saw that? I barely grazed him. Because I didn't go through the health attack properly. Accuracy does matter. There is one tiny annoying niggle with how the health damage works. It seems to always start after the initial health attack, where you then get the direction prompt appear. It always starts vertically, so if I, if I just through instinct do a vertical attack to begin the health attack, it will then prompt me for another vertical, which is not very intuitive. I, I would, it would be great if, if I began with a vertical, the next prompt would be horizontal so I could flow into it. Just something that catches me off guard sometimes. I'm not sure if I did Penguin. I, I never did play the Under Presents. Someone popped in to talk to me a while ago and recommended it, but I never did get around to it. It's an interesting concept, though, but one which is is um, one that's not enduring, though, right? Because it depends on whether the staff are actually there to put on shows. Um, two guard damage for this weapon. Or health. Yeah. Let's increase the guard damage. progress. We're getting through it fast now. I can't sacrifice more health. Too risky. Let's get some... Ah. Blocking with this weapon grants it two times supercharged. Sockets are full. Okay. That means we can get Bulwark up more often. Yeah, I can imagine that they did quit, right? It kind of undermines the point of the game, so it's a be there, you have to experience it in the moment thing. Not... It, I, I respect the experimentation. Always do it, but in this case, I don't think it was... Um, it paid off. I wish that you didn't have the seam on the right side of the screen. More health. 
Oh no, that's not health. That's uh, super. Dealing health damage to enemies grants this weapon two times supercharge. Yes. What? Area two. that <sighs> huh what was that noise oh my shield big swings with this weapon deal 25% more damage while at full health this weapon deals more guard and health damage we're gonna go for mm, I don't think I played any of their, their products. What's this? More health damage for the cost of health. One combo, yes please. How are we doing? Oh my god. Maybe if I fail soon, there's time for one more run. But if that does happen, I'll have to full on try and speed run meter it.
Great job, champion. I hope that some of you may be interested in trying this from seeing this gameplay. It really is quite something to play it rather than to watch it, as is true for many VR experiences. Assuming that you enjoy actually moving your body somewhat, which I hope you all do. Really? Okay. slot for a cost of health. I'll take it! If I can upgrade Soulburn even more, that would be very useful. Okay. Big boy time. Hey, Beats. Thank you. Glad you're enjoying. Bulwark. I agree. My neck hurts too, buddy. Try and sneak in hits. Good. Supercharge time. What the hell was that? <sighs> that was a stray. He does like a weird ghost hit after he supercharges himself. There's no indicator. And he's out of range. It's strange. Wonder if that's a bug. This game actually has a full avatar too. Note the legs aren't that janky. See how they actually seem to uh, somewhat move properly compared to other games where you would see the third person avatars of other players and yet the leg movement is super, super janky. And this game of all of them doesn't need to have that attention to detail at all. Ah, yeah. Never noticed that until now. Bad for me. Focus. Focus.
Good work. <sighs> True. Yeah, that's a good point about the slower speed, yeah. Very good point. We can either gain one max health. No, I'm taking health restore. Play it safe. Let's see if he does that weird glitchy move again. Gotcha. That was so fun to parry. That felt amazing. Come on. Who's first? The shield saved me a hit. Damn, I could have finished him there. Not quick enough. That will do. Magnificent. <sighs> Getting tired, chat. <sighs> if you're talking to me, Andrew, yes, I have. Yeah, the stuff that he's shown off looks great. Slaying an enemy with this weapon restores three dash charges. Nyeh. But as Tommy says, kind of at the stage now with VR tech where it's a... Uh, <clears throat> where it's a uh, put it into practice mind, you know. I understand that there are many things, many cool things which can be done with the systems, but we need to see them put into a good game at this stage to really justify them and to prove to other users and developers that it's something worthwhile pursuing. All right, round two. Three health. Oh, last time I had seven health or six. Soul burn. I'm relying on you. I'm going to play extra cautious here. One, two, three, four. Your turn. Three, four. Okay, your turn. Soul burn. Extra cautious, extra cautious. Damn it, I was trying to get to him. One, two, three, four. Oh no! Got him. One, two, three, four. Back up. 
Okay, we're out of the range. He's near death. Oh, damn. One, two, three, four. Soul burn. I need you. I'm scared, chat. Damn it! It's all burns up. Yes! Soul burn did the job. Getting desperate. It fled before the battle ended. Keep following. It won't be able to run forever. And that's a free health restore. Maximum health. Dealing guard damage to enemies. This weapon grants. Oh. I can choose to get four health, or I can have it so that my mace gets double supercharged by doing guard damage. Thus. Getting soul burn twice as fast than I otherwise would. Oh, decisions, decisions. <sighs> Going for it. <sighs> okay. Back in a second. Enjoy the music. No, I haven't killed him. I played the mod briefly on Half-Life Alex. See the results at the end.
Nice. What do we have here? Another one. Good. Unscathed. And extra health to boot. Thank you. I hope so too, Penguin. I hope so too. Slower. Save the soul burn for the for the big guy. Come to me. Come here. I feel like the Health damage precision is a little stricter at these higher levels. Perhaps it's just me fatiguing. <laughs> Great job, champion. I think I'm improving. What a wonderful feeling, knowing that it's physical, rather than improving my timing or twiddling my thumbs or fingers. Nope, we're keeping our health. More dash impact. And 55 Aether. Dash impact it is. Not too far now, chat. These spell weavers feel different, champion. Be on your guard. I will push through. Damn right I will. I love the burn. It's my friend. Just in case. Sorry if the breathing's too heavy. I forget about it when I'm in the midst of fighting. 
I'm really happy to hear that this is a great spectator game. I watched a VOD back from my previous stream, and what isn't conveyed as well, even through the wider VR view, is the is the emphasis of the arm and swing actions I'm doing. You kind of only catch the last third of it. So I think uh, it's not quite as engaging as it, as it otherwise would be. If this game had a proper spectator view that gave you... Um, that, that showed more of what my arms were doing, I think it would be much better. But glad to hear you like it, for what it is. Okay, got to deal with those mages first. That, that is buggy. That is buggy for sure. Okay. That has some phantom range noted, but it's always the same side, so at least I can adapt to it. Get away from me. <laughs> Fine. Okay. Two, three, for you. He's down. Good. Annihilated. <sighs> okay. Fifteen minutes. Yes, sir. I'll get moving. Oh, do we get ma more max health or health crystal? Got to play it safe. <sighs> Breathe. <sighs> Nearly there. Then go. Shield. Gotcha. Whew. 
Good. That went well. Do bear in mind, I've never reached the last boss before. I do not know what to expect. Look at that. 275 Aether. What do we have here? Two guard damage, minus one health. It's not worth it. Aether. Wrong one. Okay. Let's do this. So then No Oh, couldn't see. No Oh no. That was a costly mistake. Cutting it fine. That's right. And go around there. Burn, come on. Come on, Sol. One, two, three, four. Get away from me. One, two, yes. One, two, three. My shield saved me there. Please. Thank you. Maybe this is the last boss? Yes. Okay. Wish me luck. I think this worked out quite well. Be careful, champion. You are in its domain now. Yeah, you don't say. What to expect, what to expect. Yeah. Stand by. <sighs> I 
So then, one, two, three, four. No. Can't see anything. But okay. One, two, three. for me. Hmm. Okay. Mages first. Dash. Okay, we have shield, we have soul burn. One. The shield took it, it's fine. Doing good. Good. Jesus. No. One, two, three. Soul burn. This may take him. Yes, we did it. Assuming that's the end. Please, I see. Should have got that earlier. Did I do it? Was I on time? Oh yeah. Nice. You did it. It's dead. GG chat. The corruption is dissipating. <sighs> That was so good fun. Such good fun, excuse me.
hands are trembling. <laughs> ah, I couldn't think of a more fitting, dramatic ending if I do say so myself. Maybe if I got down to one hit, it would have been a dramatic. Whoa! Is challenging normal difficulty, Penguin? <laughs> like a movie. Ah, oh, that's great. Happy to hear. Fantastic game, eh? Fair enough. Done. You truly are astounding, champion. The creature is dead, and a small portion of the forest looks a little less... bleak. Unfortunately, that creature was but one of many. Meaning we have our work cut out for us. <sighs> Let's get to wow, it. Wow, look at that sword. We have to buy that. Nightmare is a devastating challenge for rune knights with higher level weapons. Nice. Look at this sword. <sighs> Alternating strikes make sense. The detail on these is very cool. We have to have a look at this sword. Titan strength wield all two-handed weapons in a single hand, as if they were held in two hands. Last ten seconds. It gains 50% of the offhand weapon's base health and guard damage. Falling strike, this weapon gains plus 10 health damage per point of combo limit beyond one. Crits with this weapon always finish combos. <laughs> I thought you'd like that one. Very heavy. My controller is up here. Makes sense. Should have that in the right hand, actually. Ah, that was great fun. I hope that you enjoyed it as well, viewers. And maybe if you feel it's worthwhile, you can support these devs for what they've done. And bear in mind, this is a far four or five year old game now. I will check out the, um, the other series that they've done, something that has the title Die in it at some point, based upon playing this. So, left hand, and there we go. Wow. There we go. Love the sounds, too. Very hard to block with. You can imagine having to do this quickly. You can see it won't catch up, nor will it align. Hmm. Interesting trade-off. Very, very cool. <sighs> this is Shell Games. Yes. Good. Glad you enjoyed it. Hey, Blender. So this is nightmare difficulty. Enemies have increased guard. Many encounters and boss fights are transformed into punishing tests of cunning, skill, and stamina. Aether gain increased by 20%. Ideal for those with fully upgraded weapons eager to throw themselves into the, to the fray. Crushing a difficulty keystone will respawn near bosses. Yeah. Hmm. So I was on challenging. I suppose, yes, this would be class as normal, wouldn't it? If this is relaxed, then challenging would be normal. And even on normal, that was... Challenging. The name is very appropriate. Ah, good stuff. You know, this place could use a tidying up. Ah, that's no, great, Beats. Do envy me. It's about. wonderful that I'm exhausted. Think about it. My body is going to strengthen itself so long as I eat correctly and sleep well, as a result of having great fun on this game and sharing it with all of you. I couldn't ask for anything better. 
You benefit and I benefit in a real world, tangible way. Gotta love VR for that. <sighs> right then, I'm gonna take a rest for around an hour to an hour and a half and then I'm gonna jump onto my Twitch account, Mr. Underscore Pancake Voice, uh, Pancake Underscore Voice, to continue playing through Banisher's Ghosts of New Eden. So if any of you are interested to catch me there in a little while from now, then you're more than welcome. It's the eggs that follow the morning after. I love them. I love them. If I don't ache, at least in some way, then something's wrong. It's the most wonderful ache and pain you could ever hope for because you know the consequences are just going to be that much sweeter. Love it. Hmm. Rumble is great for a workout. CG, I don't know if you've looked through my videos, but I have several videos dedicated to Rumble. The first is This VR Game Innovates and I Want More, something like that. That's dedicated to Rumble entirely and my journey playing through. And then I have a couple of videos called Fit for VR, which was a pilot test for a series that I plan, I still plan to do, where I pick a selection of VR games that I think that I think are interesting but require you to really be in decent shape in order to excel and then I recorded myself going to the gym the process of me gradually improving a little bit in rumble to show how improving in real life can improve your performance in the game as well and the gaming doing well in a game no longer need be against having a healthy body as getting good at a flat screen game would typically require us to sacrifice our health a lot of the time by sitting there in bad posture and so on and so forth. Ah, I see. Okay. Yeah, Rumble is great. And Shoeless's videos are fantastic. Amazing editor. Puts me to shame. But that's fine, I don't consider myself an editor anyway, it's not my calling. Okay, guys, I'm heading off. You all have a lovely day. Oh, yeah, the poll! I forgot about that. Thank you. Let's have a look. 73% of you believed in me. 15 votes. Ah. Thank you for your belief, 73%. Hmm. And for the 23%, the 26%, I look forward to proving you wrong again in the future. Maybe I'll do a stream at the highest difficulty at some point, just as a general mess around novelty. I'll see how I feel. Anyway, I'm going to stop yak uh, yapping. You all have a good day. And maybe see you over at Twitch in an hour or Other an hour and a half or so. Take care. Bye-bye, Uzi. Bye-bye, Killian, them? CG, Penguin, Beats, Blender, and all the others, so I can't be bothered to scroll chat up. Bye-bye. so laggy. I wonder why it's so laggy. It's very slow to catch up. <laughs>